So today we're with Fernando Perdomo at Stairway Studios, and he is going to show us his top five pieces of equipment. So basically I said to him, it can be instruments, it could be microphones, it could be an interface, it could be anything. What are the top five things that you just couldn't live without when you're making a record? Nashville tuned um, 1920s Regal Parlor. This is one of my favorite secret weapons. If you don't know what Nashville tuning is, basically, it's a, it is a, uh, the high strings of a 12 string. So basically you have a high E, regular, regular E, regular B, high G, high D, high A, high E. And when you, when you, when you layer this along with a regular acoustic, it sounds like the world's biggest 12 string. And it also creates an I use this on so many records, and it's such a great sound, especially when you uh, do double-tracked six-string, and then you put this in the middle. It's just the biggest-sounding acoustic sound on earth. All right, uh, so that's number one. What's number, number one? two? Number two. My 83 Fender Squire P-Bass um, with flat-wound strings. Flat-wound strings is part of my sound on the bass. Uh, I played bass on the, fourth, on the final Emmett Rhodes record. And it's that sound. And the thing about, fl fl about uh, flat wound strings, it's the actual sound of bass as opposed to um, the kind of hi-fi music man world of, you know, like the battery bass. And uh, it just sits in the mix so much better and it has its own place. And it's very percussive. And it just sits great. And this bass, uh, I think the strings have been on it for about 15 years. But you know what? That's the first bass I grab for every session, so... Very, very cool. Um, interface. This is actually my spare. This is the uh, Soundcraft Signature MK2-22. And what it is is an analog console with digital converters, and it sends out 22 channels via USB with ghost preamps. These things are sleeper. These things are incredible. They have a great sound. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not against the uh, Polo world and the... Uh, the, the standard uh, Pro Tools uh, interfaces and all the Link stuff and all the Aurora stuff. This is my jam because it's very affordable and also just very unique and very odd and also very old school. So I have two of these because uh, the power supply went on this and when I ha was having getting it fixed, I was trying out a different company's uh, products and it wasn't working for me. So I got a second one. So eventually I'm going to be able to do 44 in when I put both of these on, uh, on the setup. So this is my main interface for Pro Tools. And it's fantastic and it's actually kind of portable and fun. And you said it had Lexicon reverbs in it? Yeah, Lexicon reverbs, uh, DBX compressors in it. But uh, also you could use it as uh, with you when you set this, you could actually do analog mixing and analog summing. So it's uh, it's got everything and I love it. It's just Again, it's not the arrow, it's the Indian. So, you know, this is not a very glamorous piece of equipment, but it sounds amazing. And it's centered by universe, basically. Great, so that was three. What's number four? Rogue Electric Sitar. The ultimate in sound. <laughs> this thing is so goofy and so fun, but I, I uh, you know, sometimes... The secret might not be guitar. Maybe it's, maybe the answer is not even guitar. Maybe the answer is playing something ridiculous like a marxophone or a, you know something completely out of out of the ordinary uh, banjo. So this is um, this gets used a lot. It's got used on side. I saw the light, and I feel like you know eventually you end up with a voice on, on an instrument, and that might just be this, the Mellotron M four thousand Micro Mini Micro. Wow. Um, so Marcus, uh, Resch is a friend of mine and, uh, he brought back the Mellotron name and basically all the Mellotron and Chamberlain sounds are in this little box, this little micro cork size box. And this thing I use on pretty much every record. I just did a, I just played this on a record, uh, by an artist named Alessandra Nicewanger and I played her CD release party with this on my lap and it's got so much variety and, you know, the samples have been everywhere. But the thing about this is it's got the control, so you could do the pitch bend, and you could also mix between two different sounds and uh, do all that crazy 
a Patrick Warren type uh, pitch bending stuff. It's got that. It's got the long way down uh, um, uh, Hawaiian guitar, which sounds really cool. But this thing is a sleeper, and it's so great, and it's got all the sounds. And I, I got the Mellotron. I mean, you know, it's just an instrument that's just instant cool. You know, it's the best. I well, we did five. What about what about a six one? Just just because? Did we do five? We did do five, but okay. I think we can sleek in another one. My first, my my the first instrument I would grab in a fire. This is my Fender Mustang. The Fender Mustang is the geekiest guitar Leo Fender came up with. It's got all these weird switches. I had disengaged them because my favorite guitar player, Todd Rundgren, had one of these in the 70s, and he put a Gibson switch on it and upgraded the pickups. These are lace sensors. So this guitar is my right hand. It's good. It, 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 it is the most... It is very just expressive. The vibrato bar is, is really insane. I mean, it... I mean, that's the, that, that before the Floyd, that was the only way to really dump uh, a guitar, and that's one of the things that he, that he was obsessed with. Also, 22 frets as opposed to most Fender Strats. Uh, there are 21 frets. But it just it plays crazy, and it's also completely indestructible, and I've played it on pretty much every gig for about 25 years now. So this guitar is golden. Excellent. Fernando, thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank, thank you, you so much, Warren. Thank you so much for having us, and... Uh, Keep on watching. This is great. So long, farewell, have a good day, au revoir, adios, tschüss, tschüss, goodbye.